I usually have a string of lights over the mantel and I change out the thick greenery that we have up here. So this is kind of like a thicky eucalyptus that we have going on right now. It's something kind of fun over here. I got a pack of fairy lights to wrap this wreath. I've had the wreath for like three years now. It's actually held up really well for like a dry boxwood wreath. And I just got a string of fairy lights and put that around it. And I think it's perfect. We're here on the floor today because I wanted to give you an update of some of the books that I've been reading. I wanted to be at a cozy angle because I also have an unboxing to do with some books in it that I plan to read the week before or the week leading up to Christmas. Stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I wanted to tell you about my thoughts on a trilogy that I just finished as well as standalones that I have read this month. So I finished the Live Ship Treaters series by Robin Hobb. I just finished Ship of Destiny, which is the third book this week. I am still so impressed by the number of different characters that we get to um, follow in this story and how everything just weaves together so perfectly in the end. So excited to read the Tawny Man trilogy, which is going to bring us back to the area of Fitz and the Fool, and I'm really excited about that. A lot of readers, I think this is their favorite trilogy, but for me, I think the Farseer trilogy is still probably going to be my favorite. Although the character development that happens in this trilogy, particularly in the second and third book, is so impressive. The characters that I had really just hated from the beginning, um, they, had so much growth, so many circumstances that challenged their thinking and shaped who they were as characters that by the end you really want the best for them. Like you want them to be okay, you want them to end up with uh, the right person and be in the right place where their gifts can be utilized. So that's all I'll say about that in case you're ever planning to pick this up for yourself. I won't give any spoilers but I will say that this is definitely an adult fantasy series. Um, it hits on a lot of topics that would not work for young adults unless like there's like a lot of parent conversations happening. I would say you really need to have some dialogue going on about some of the heavy topics that are introduced in the series, especially in the final book. Something really shocking happened almost to cement the fact that they were not a good character. But in the end of this, the way that every character is kind of affirmed for their life as a whole rather than like just certain acts that they've committed is really interesting to me um and i think that particularly if you go into reading secular fantasy series with like a christian worldview it's really interesting um to see uh, Robin Hobb's treatment of not only character built throughout a lifetime but also what that matters um, in light of afterlife or eternity. I really enjoyed it. This series has some pacing issues at times in the third book particularly. We were spending too much time with the characters that weren't in the midst of the action and it kind of discourages you as a reader because you really want to be back where things are happening and you don't care as much about some of the tertiary scenes. However, as it always does, everything does come together and it is all important. It's just sometimes it's tedious when it comes to pacing. Yeah, so finish the Lives of Traders. Real tempted to just continue on in the realm of the Elderlings, but I do have plans to begin the Mistborn series this month. Let me know in the comments if that's a mistake, if I should stay in the realm of the Elderlings or if you think I should go ahead and start the Brandon Sanderson series. So I'm curious to know what your vote is on that. Another book that I read, love this one, What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. This one just brings back all of those happy feels that you had if you watched The Mummy growing up or 
the Indiana Jones series, except in this story, we have a female character at the center of everything. The main character, Inez, I like the way that she kind of rebels against her societal expectations in the book, but the way in which it's explained, we know that that's not conventional. And I think there's a very fine line to tread with historical fiction where you convey this is not normal for the time period, but this is what the character is doing. And I think that uh, Ibanez did that in such a flawless way. Um, this is definitely spicier than I expected it to be. There is a romance and I didn't understand initially that the romance was going to be such a big part of the story, but it is. But it's balanced with a lot of great historical and archaeological detail. So it's not a light and fluffy popcorn type book, like it actually does have some substance to it. Um, which is cool because I think that's another thing that we love about the Indiana Jones movies or The Mummy is that there is that historical detail, whether it's mythical or real. Also, surprise, there is magical realism in this story, which I did not know going into it either. And that kind of makes an interesting element for not only the main plot but also the future of the world building that could take place. We have items that are imbued with different powers and everyone wants them not just because of their value but because of their significance and what they can do. So that's cool. I'm really looking forward to book two and I'm going to be hanging on to my copy of this one so that if I need to reread it, get a refresher of where we are, I'll be able to do that. I think I read this one in two days because it is very fast paced. It does feel like watching an action adventure movie and the end did have quite a cliffhanger. I have my scissors and I have a box of books to unbox with you. This is an order of books that I purchased through Pango Books, a app that allows you to sell your used books and purchase used books from other readers like you. It's really good for finding affordable copies of books that you want to read. You can save wish lists, you can curate your own shop, whether it's books that you are selling or books that you've read that you want other people to be Able to access easily. That's a recent feature actually that they just introduced. This is not sponsored video, but if I can, I'll try to put an affiliate link in the video so that you can check out Pango Books for yourself. I wonder if you have any guesses as to what's in this box. All right, so here's the first one I'll be reading. It's The Ghost of Green Glass House by Kate Milford. Um, I read Green Glass House last year around Christmas time and I really loved it and I'm excited to continue in the series this year. If you want to join me, I would recommend reading the first book first. It takes place in this mysterious inn that's kind of secluded and it holds all kinds of mysteries of its past inhabitants. We're following a couple children who are wanting to solve the mystery of the house and they're also trying to figure out exactly who the guests are who have all arrived and are staying at this inn at the same time. So I'm going to be staying at the Green Glass Inn the week of Christmas and this is going to be the first book. The other two that are in the same series I believe are standalones, like they don't have to be read in a particular order but I'll have to check on that. So I have Blue Crown, which is a Green Glass House story. Raconteurs, ah, the Raconteurs uh, Commonplace book, which is actually something that features within the story. Um, yeah, so this is set in the world of the Green Glass House. Both of these are. I think this is also another set in the world, but it might not necessarily be something that takes place in the green glass house. This house initially looks completely different because it has other buildings on the side of it. So in total, I have four books that are all set in the green glass house world. And I'm going to be reading this the week leading up to Christmas. If you want to join me, you can go ahead and read the first book and I will be starting with The Ghosts of Green Glass House. I decided to purchase an advent calendar from Frostbeard Candle Company, which is one of my favorite brands. Uh, this is not sponsored, again. But they had a pretty decent Black Friday sale and using my girl math, I applied some card points to it 
and I ended up with 12 candles and they are all um, festive scents. So I thought we could take a look at them. I know it's kind of lame that you can't smell them, but I'll read off the label to you and describe, you know, what it smells like to me. So hopefully this isn't too torturous, but it has their logo in the middle and then some snowflakes around it. 12 days of book miss. Let's open the first one. I'm gonna go with the top left. Ah, it is Christmas at the Burrow, which is a Harry Potter inspired scent. And it smells like cookies, cinnamon, and vanilla. Mm. Yes. This is very nice. It makes me want to go visit the Weasleys for Christmas for sure. The second one is Holiday Hooga. And this one smells like hearth, sugar plum, and Earl Grey. I love Earl Grey. So I'm excited about this one getting like the hearth, like the fiery kind of scent to it. I can smell kind of like the pepperiness of the Earl Grey. Very citrus and, I hate to say a shower scent. It smells a little soapy. This is good though. This is definitely, it smells like Christmas. <laughs> this one is called Ba Humbug. And I would assume that's inspired by A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. We have pine, fig, orange, and pepper as our notes for this one. Kind of a bluish gray color to it. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely smell the orange and the pepper and the fig. This is very nice. <laughs> this is another one that just smells like Christmas to me. Here's the last one for today. This is Christmas in the Great Hall. We have another Harry Potter inspired scent with mistletoe, ginger, and hollyberry as the notes. Mm, maybe it's the color that's throwing me off, but it has more of like a vanilla sort of tone to it as well. You can definitely smell the ginger. I don't think I've smelled mistletoe or hollyberry before. I think my favorites are Ba Humbug and Christmas at the Burrow. Christmas at the Burrow I've actually purchased before, and so I knew the scent, and this one I just kind of really gravitate toward dessert smells more than anything, and that definitely hits it. And then this one I think is just very unique. Mm. So I still have eight candles left, and I plan to open the next four in my next video and the next four in the video after that new addition to the christmas tbr the kingdom of sweets by erica johansson and this is a nutcracker retelling and it was in the book of the month selections for this month i don't know about you but i grew up going to the nutcracker nearly every year and always wishing i could be in it so i'm looking forward to this retelling and just being immersed in that world again that'll be fun so that's another addition to my christmas tbr Thanks for joining me for this fun holiday vlog. I don't know how many of these I'm going to be doing. If I'm going to like take a step back and just enjoy the extra time to read this month. I appreciate getting to share with you both my love of Christmas and my love of books and I hope you had a fun time during this vlog. If you've watched this far, please leave a Christmas tree emoji in the comments and let me know what you've been reading lately or a book that's set during Christmas time that made it to your holiday TBR. I'll see you in another video soon.